How about, um, you know, I, I had to th pray about putting this up there. Um, it's, it's, it's good what it says, isn't it? Okay. Uh, this is a guy named Eliphaz who is being quoted here. Eliphaz is, is not always correct in what he says. But it's, God had it recorded for us so we could read it. And so this is something that, you know, I take some study about the book of, of Job. You can't just read it lightly and say, well, whatever it is, is Job inspired by God? Yes, is it the word of God? Yes, it is. But it contains philosophies of men and then it confronts them, okay? So it, it, you have to be, <clears throat> I'm, I'm always a little concerned about doing that. But, but, but what, um, this is so important what Eliphaz did understand here. Uh, it's so important that we embrace this, this truth uh, because we've got, uh, we've, why should I submit to God? Why should I obey God? Why should I live my life according to the principles of God's word? Why? I hope you ask yourself questions because it's really good to do that. And, and it, it, it causes you to, to think a little bit and search. And God invites us to search. And... Uh, in the Bible is something you can spend your whole life searching. It's, it is amazing. It is truly God's word, uh, God's book. And so, wh why? Well, there, there's quite a few reasons. Um, let me say one, <clears throat> one reason. I hope it's obvious to all of us who believe it's right. Okay? And that, that, that could be enough. That could be enough, right? But it's not the only reason, but that, that should be enough. To submit to God, to follow God's word, and be obedient to him, it's the right thing to do. What did, what did the scripture tell the kids? Children, obey your parents and the Lord, for it is right. It's the right thing to do. And uh, I don't know if anybody ever told you, you know, <laughs> Right is his own reward. Well, thankfully, there's more reward than just right. But uh, there, that uh, sometimes we can find comfort in that. I, I like more than that. I don't know if I'm selfish or something, but I want, I want more out of it than it's, it's its own reward. But sometimes that's what it gets down to. That's what the test is. Will you do right? Because that's what God wants us to do. So we have a... We have examples in the Bible. I want you to turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, and we'll start here, and, uh, and let's get running with this. So Paul is talking to a church that is not really following everything that he told them. You know, they, uh, I don't know about you, but there are a lot of things in life I had to be told several times before I got it. You know, is anybody like that, you know? You, you, you've heard it, you got it, you heard it right the first time, but somehow you just didn't get it. And at some point you hear it again and again, and you get it. Maybe, maybe you see the wisdom of it. Maybe you see the, the results of it. But whatever it is, you, you finally get it. The Corinthians didn't get it the first time. And uh, uh, they, got, they got who Jesus was, and they trusted him, and, and got the Spirit of God, and but why, why they were to live a certain way, um, how they were to have victory in that, they, they didn't get it all, okay? So the Apostle Paul is writing them, and he's correcting a lot of things here with their practice of their faith. And, um, and so he goes to examples. Now, th this is a real major theme in your Bible, Okay, and, and those of you who are in the school of theology and we're doing um, the book of Genesis, are there some crazy examples in there, aren't they? I mean, we can, we can say, boy, I don't want to be like that. You know, we see a person and what they're, how they live and the decisions they make and the consequences of it. And, 
And if we study that, we'll find out that the, the point here is that God is right. His word is right. His ways are right. And, if, and we can cut out a lot of bad stuff in our lives and in our family if we'll embrace that. Okay? Now, God has established physical laws in his universe. Okay, you, you know that. You know, uh, the, there's laws of motion. One of them has to do with momentum. That's why if you step out in the road and that, that fly runs into you, it doesn't impact you very much. But if that bus runs into you, there's a difference, right? You know the difference between the fly and the bus, right? That has to do with laws of, that God has put into motion in his physical universe. And yet there are also other laws. And the Bible reveals many of those laws to us about how we're to live in our relationship with him and the decisions we make. Why? Uh, these, the, one of the great ones is called the law of the harvest. And, uh, you know... It's been carried over into other religions, like uh, like in the Eastern religions. I think they s understand this God-given concept as karma. You know, why did that happen? Well, you reap what you sow. They don't say that. Well, it was karma. They, 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 you know, they planted some seeds and they uh, came to pass. They got what they deserved, or something like that. That that's a biblical law. You know, whether the heathens understand it or not, it's, it's a law. And so you cannot live in violation of that law without suffering consequences. You cannot live practicing that law the way it's intended to do without being blessed by it. It's just the law. It, it's, it, and we, there's the law of love that God tells us here, you know, and so we see the, um, the wisdom, if you would, of the uh, the golden rule as Jesus gave it to us, you know, and that's something the world, to a degree, wise men understand, is something God established. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And so when we live by that, it doesn't mean because we're in a perfect world, we always get perfect results from that, you know. But it means that, generally speaking, a life lived under these principles will be far better than a life that is lived opposed to these. Now, there's, there's a factor that comes in that I, I should mention so that we can understand this. There is someone else called the God of this age who works contrary and seeks to deceive us and so somebody can live in violation of God's law and they can seem to prosper for a while. Okay? They, they can seem to. Um, I think the term is making a deal with the devil. Right? So you make a deal with the devil and so far so good. But those laws, those chickens will come home to roost if we can use another term there. And... Uh, and so he, he's a liar, and uh, it's not a good thing to make a deal with him. But anyway, we, we got from uh, 1 Corinthians 10, we've got uh, some examples from the children of Israel. So if, you're, if you don't read your Old Testament in uh, Exodus and Numbers, you won't know what in the world is talking about. But uh, if you read this, you see that these people, they had... Wonderful opportunity to enjoy the blessings of God. And they rejected that by their choices. And they suffered for it. And so, this is, for example, uh, number uh, verse 8 says, Don't let us commit sexual immorality as some of them did. And one day 23,000 fell. Nor let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed by serpents. Nor complain as some of them also complained and were <coughs> destroyed by the destroyer. Verse 11 says, Now all these things happen to them as examples. And they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the ages has come. It's talking about the church here. We... we <coughs> We're the consummation of God's program 
and it's, it's revelation of what he's doing through time. And so we're supposed to learn from that. So what do we know about God? Well, the heavens, uh, <coughs> excuse me, got a tickle. Somebody bring their cat to church. No, I'm, I'm okay. I'm okay. <laughs> so, did, uh, <coughs> and so the, these people, the, they disobeyed God, and we don't have to experience the same things that they did. You can get up. It's easier than me getting down. I mean, really. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Well, we can go on an extra half hour now. <laughs> Thank you. That's really nice. That there's a there's got to be a spiritual blessing for that, huh? And so these things happen so we can learn from. Well, you don't have to experience everything yourself. You know, now experience is a good teacher, isn't it? But it carries a stick and it leaves scars for a lot of us. But I remember very well the experiences, the lessons from experience. And uh, I wish I'd been wiser to learn another way. And God says that you don't have to learn everything by trial and error. You don't have to learn everything by getting whacked. <laughs> okay. The, the, the whack is, is legitimate. Okay, a loving parent uses the whack, right? And um, my dad almost loved me to death. And <laughs> so, um, but we don't have to, because I knew enough that I didn't have to go through what I went through. I made choices. They were selfish and foolish and childish, I guess you would say. But, but we don't have to be that. You see, God says, look, the, this, the, this is how the universe functions. This is how he designed it. The heavens declare the glory of God. He's the one who made it. I made it. It's, it was made for his glory. It functions by his laws and principles. It's, uh, somebody called the Bible uh, basis, basic instructions before leaving earth. Okay, it's like God said, you know... There's some obvious things that I have made in my world that you should follow that the, the 250 years ago learned men call it natural law. You know, they would say there's just things that are obvious that God has put into his creation and this is how it functions. People are rejecting that now. They're just rejecting it. And you can't reject God's law and his design without consequences. And so we cannot let the culture, the world, education, people are supposed to be smart. We can't let them lead us. We have to let God lead us in our lives. We want, we want to be, everybody, I hope you want to be happy, okay? Well, happiness is not the main goal of life, but it's kind of important. You know, I enjoy being happy. God says he wants me to experience joy and there's a way to do that. And, and there's, but there's also a way to suffer and be miserable. And if you think that because you're a Christian you can't be miserable, what world are you living in? You're, you're, you're experiencing denial. Christians can be, I think we can be more miserable than lost people. Because we have a greater opportunity, and when we say no to that, that that's that's pretty miserable, isn't it? All right, you you've been purchased, you've been bought with a price, and you you become God's child, and and to be a disobedient child or an un, a, a lukewarm child or whatever you want to say, that's that's there's you're not experiencing the joy that God wants you to have, and you're missing out on something, and that's that's. That's bad. Well, God tells us here that he created the thing. So God's designed it. And so we should understand, I mean, this is not necessarily life as far as eternal life. The, 
the world can benefit from this. The, the creator makes principles and he makes designs and we embrace what God, the creator, has done. And, and then people who don't know God can benefit from following those principles and living by that design. They can. There, there are principles about hard work and honest living and integrity and money that, that is done the right way that people who don't even know God can benefit from. You don't have to cheat and steal and lie to be prosperous in this world. You can follow those principles. But that's only for a time. And Christians, we, we live in the light of eternity. So we can enjoy this now following God's principles, but God has something much greater for us, and we should live in light of that. that that's how we get through some of the bumps in the road, isn't it? Because this world is not our home we're passing through, but... God doesn't want us to live like, like failures. God doesn't want us to, to just be foolish in the way that we make choices. God's given us his word. Uh, look in the 119th Psalm. And uh, you, you read your Bible and you learn from people. And you say, but, but this is not how you do it. Well, look. We just studied, we're studying the life of Jacob. Jacob, he, he married two women and kind of adopted two wives, if you would. He had four. God loved him. God blessed him in many ways. That's not God's design. Jesus said, let's go back to the beginning. It was one man, one woman for life. Okay, that's the way God intended it to be. Okay, did God work around some of Jacob's failures? Uh, yes, he did. But he was not blessed because he had four wives. <laughs> yeah, th these men want to say amen, but they're really scared. <laughs> no, look, there was so much turmoil in that family because of not following God's principles. Okay? So, no, we, we shouldn't uh, use this excuse. Nobody's perfect. All right, but we should learn from what God says. And people who follow God learn from what they're doing when they're following God as far as I, practicing, as far as pattering your life after. But you can learn from everybody. You know what we say? Everyone is an example. Just what kind of example are you? All right? And we, we talked about this with the home Father's Day. That was so convicting to me. But anyway, um, Psalm 119 is something that we need to embrace because it says in verse 89, there's a lot of verses here. So, eight, yeah, it's the longest chapter in your Bible. That's one of those trivia questions you can you ever get on uh, Alex I'll take Bible for two hundred dollars please what's the longest chapter in the Bible what is Psalm 119 okay um, 89 says forever O Lord your word is settled in heaven it, it is it stands firm it, it is faithful it is it is settled Okay, and you say, well, the way we treat God's word, the way men treat God's word, is if God's word is in flux. And um, it can mean what we interpret it to mean, or it was written 2,000 years ago, or 4,000 years ago, whatever we would say, and so things are different now. No, it's, it's the eternal word of God is settled and the one who spoke it is in heaven, okay? He's not being influenced by the things that go on in this world. And so it's, it is a done deal. In, uh, in verse 151, man, there's a lot of verses here. It says, you are near, O Lord, and all your commandments are true. Okay, so is it, is, this is amazing. So I want to know, uh, know how to live life 
I, I want to know who I am. I want to know who God is. I want to know how to relate to people. I want to know how to raise a family. I want to know uh, how to be a man of integrity. All these things, the questions that I might have, God's got a book. Amen. He's got a book. I can go and read it. And it's true. Yes. You know, um, what if we, if we look at science, okay, and... Uh, you don't have to look at but a few hundred years of science and you see that this is something that it can't say this is settled. It, it is a changing thing. Something that was settled science 200 years ago is laughed at today, isn't it? It's foolishness. And, um, and that's because it's man's understanding, not God's understanding. It's man's understanding. And God says, but I've given you something that you can build your life on that doesn't change. It's my word. It is the truth. Look at verse 160. And, uh, the entirety of your word is truth. The entirety of it. Every one of your righteous judgments endures forever. Okay. Now, so... We, we live in a culture that is pushing envelopes. They're, they're just taking what has been settled and understood for generations and they're saying, well, that's all wrong. You've got to take that and throw it out because we've got something new for you. Jesus said, the one who hears my word and, and believes it and obeys it, this is the one who builds his house on a rock. But the one who doesn't is the one who's building their house on sand. Now, wisdom is justified of her children. The results here will say. And so we can look at results in our lives today, but we can look on beyond to the judgment seat of Christ. Okay, what does God say? To build our life on the philosophies, the changing philosophies of the world is like building your house on the beach. Okay? The view is wonderful, but the first storm, it's gone. Okay? It's not, it's not lies, false premises for your life. They don't, you don't see that they're false when the sun's shining. You see how bad they are when the storm comes. But God says his word is like a rock. And we build our lives on it. And when the storms, because life has storms. You know, why do these people build in a floodplain over and over and over again? I don't understand. But, but that's how people live their lives. You know? We, we don't have to live that way. God says you can be successful in a real sense. Successful in the sense that, that your life is of value and purpose and you you can stand before God one day and hear well done I mean <laughs> the world doesn't have anything to offer like that but the first time that happened the serpent said to Eve has God said and he began to put doubt in her mind that God had her best interest in mind, that God loved her, that God knew what he was talking about. Satan is still doing that today. Yes. You can turn on the radio, you can turn on the TV, you can read the internet, you can just talk to people all around and you'll find out that the deception is still there. How can I be safe? How can I know the truth? The entrance of your word gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. That's me. Yeah, I need it. And you know, the psalmist here, this is one of my favorite sections in this. Um, let's see here. I want you to... In uh, verse 97 of Psalm 119. Now, th this sounds like somebody's bragging here. Maybe he is a little bit. 
I think he's rejoicing. Okay, David's writing this and he's rejoicing. He's, he's realized something that he, he is better off than other people because he believed God. And so he says, oh, how I love your law. It's my meditation all the day. Verse 97. You, you, through your commandment, make me wiser than my enemies. That's pretty important. Wouldn't you say? Yes. It's pretty important to be wiser than your enemies. All right. You're kind of in uh, trouble when they're a lot smarter than you. Okay. David had enemies too. They are ever with me. But verse 99 you know, show this to your kids. They don't have to be as smart as you. They can be smarter than you are. They don't have to be as wise as you. They can be wiser than you are. He says, I have more understanding than all my teachers. Now, what was that uh, old Western TV show, No Brag, Just Fact? That was... <laughs> that, that was... Uh, that's what he's rejoicing in. You know, the teachers don't know everything, do they? I understand more than the ancients because I keep your precepts. Do you, do you see what... I, I, I'm not belittling education at all. If it's good education, and it has to be built on the knowledge of God or is a bad education. But I respect people who have more degrees than I do, and that's a lot, a lot of people, okay? And it's good to, to learn and to study and to have accomplishments like that. But you see, there's, there's an education that God offers that brings success. Okay, it brings God's blessing on your life. And I hope that you'll pursue that. Because God wants you to be learning every day, all your life. Learn, learn, learn. And the Bible pro provides you with the, the important stuff. How to learn. You know, what was it? Somebody somebody called me for, and I shouldn't say this because you won't, you won't do what I just said, will you? What somebody did to me? You, 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 you won't hear this story and say, well, okay, I'll call pastor. All right. Somebody called me and said, my garage door is broken. I don't have a sign on my truck that says God, garage door repair. You know that? But anyway, I went over and the cable had come off the, uh, the one side. So the garage door's not working, the cable's all off. And so I look at it and try, I don't know how to do this. YouTube. And there's a guy on YouTube that says, this is how you do it. And it was like a three minute video. I can watch that, I have that much attention. And so I watched it for three minutes and he showed me exactly how to fix that garage door. I'm a hero, you know. <laughs> Don't be afraid to ask. James says, if any of you lack wisdom, ask of God. Don't, don't be afraid. I'll, God, I'll figure this out. God, I'll just bang my knuckles and, and scrape my knees and I'll figure it out. That's dumb. You can go to God tube and he'll tell you how to do it. <laughs> Okay, let's pray.